Hi, I'm Tate with FixMyOwnAC.com and this lesson is how to change a contactor. A contactor is the thing that it's a switch. The electricity comes into the switch and out of the switch controlling the condenser fan motor and the compressor. Okay, now the very first thing that you need to do is shut the electricity off. This unit that we're working on right now is a split system, meaning that it has a furnace in the attic and the furnace in the attic creates 24 volts. That 24 volts is sent down to the condenser. The condenser is the part sitting on the ground. So we have to disconnect the power from the, from the furnace, otherwise we have a potential of shorting out the transformer. So the very first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to shut off the breaker for the, for the gas furnace that's up in the attic of this house. You might have a gas furnace uh, down in the basement. You might have an air handler, a heat pump air handler in the attic. You want to make sure to shut that breaker off because that 24 volts, this is very important. It will not hurt you, but if you touch those two wires together or you touch one of those wires to ground, the grounding of the case of the unit, you will burn out your transformer and then uh, that's another lesson and another expense. So the very first thing that we want to do is shut the breaker off for the air handler. So I have that shut off. Now we're going to go out to the condensing unit and we're going to change the uh, contactor. Okay, now we're over here at the condensing unit, and if you uh, the uh, contactor gets line voltage uh, from the disconnect into the contactor, so we want to make sure to unplug the disconnect. Now you pull out the disconnect, set that there on the top, and then you know that the electricity is cut off from the breaker to the condensing unit. So now we're going to swing around and we're going to change the contactor. The uh, contactor right here, we have line one and line two that come from the disconnect into the contactor, that's your line voltage, then the, it goes through the contactor to uh, line one and line two over here. Now, what we've noticed with this contactor is all the wires on the right side are yellow and all the wires on the left side are black. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take those wires off because we know all the wires, yellow wires go to the right and all the black wires go on the left. So let's take those off. Now, let's disconnect the uh, low voltage. If you look at your low voltage on your new contactor and your old contactor, the low voltage comes from the thermostat wire from the air handler. We're going to disconnect those. Those can be interchanged, the blue on this side, the brown on this side. It can be changed either way. Now the only thing we have left is the, the voltage on the bottom. I already loosened them, so I'm just going to I'm just going to unscrew the contactor and we're going to mount the new contactor exactly the way the old one was. Quarter nut nut driver. Put that bad boy back in there. Okay, now we got our new contact. I'm gonna put these two screws in there, only take a second. Now remember, we had our yellow wires on the right, black wires on the left. Okay, let's hook up our low voltage, one here, one here. We got that out of the way. We got yellow on the right. There's one yellow wire. Here's the other yellow wire. Now yours might be different. Might be two black wires, red wires, green wires, yellow wires, purple wires, whatever the manufacturer decided to use. This one's yellow on the right, black on the left. So I'm gonna hook up the yellow wire there. Kinda like that. Here's our black wire. Loosen up this lug, put that in there, I like that. You want to make sure these are nice and tight. A loose connection creates heat and then it'll burn out them, it'll burn them wires right off. Okay, we got a black wire there, we got our two blacks, our three yellows, that's the way it was. We got our low voltage right there. The only thing we have left is to hook up this line voltage. And these are interchangeable too. If you get, uh, if you get those crossed, it's not going to make any bit of difference. You don't want to put them both on the same terminal, obviously, but one on the right, one on the left. Okay, we're just about done. Let me tighten up this. Okay, we got every, everything hooked up. We got uh, line one, line two. We got our yellows on the right. We got our blacks on the left. 
We got our low voltage hooked back up. Contact, brand new contactors in there ready to go. Contactors usually last between three and seven years. So if yours looks a little worn out, you might, uh, you might just want to do a little preventive maintenance and buy yourself a new one. Uh, we have several uh, for sale. There's single pole and double pole contactors at fixmyownac.com. And uh, the next step is to turn the breakers back on and fire up the unit and make sure it's working. And that's a video, that's our lesson on how to change a contactor. And I thank you for watching my video. I am Tate with FixMyOwnAC.com where we have a full variety of air conditioning parts. We have fan motors, contactors, capacitors, fan blades, indoor fan blowers, indoor fan motors. We have just about anything uh, that you could ever want or need. We also have videos, how-to videos. We also have uh, wiring manuals. If you're having trouble wiring a fan motor or a contactor, uh, go on my website, fixmyownac.com, and uh, we have uh, free, downloadable, uh, how-to wire manuals. So I appreciate you watching my video.